We now interrupt this program with an important reminder. You may recall learning about the complex numbers. These are numbers of the form a plus bi, where i is the square root of negative 1, the imaginary unit, and you can represent these numbers on the complex plane. Where the horizontal axis is the real component, the vertical axis is the imaginary component. Complex numbers, really cool. You can add them together, adding components. It's kind of like adding together vectors. Or you can multiply. If you multiply a complex number by a real number, it sort of stretches it out, rescales both components. If you multiply a complex number by the imaginary unit, by i, it has the effect of rotating this point in the plane by 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, that's the complex numbers. These are really useful from time to time. Not all the time. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with real numbers, but occasionally we're going to work with complex numbers, like right now. Because when you work with complex numbers, there's something that ties together the exponential and the trigonometric functions, sine and cosine. And that wonderful thing that ties everything together is called Euler's formula. Euler's formula relates the complex exponential to the basic trig functions in the following form. e to the i x equals cosine of x plus i times sine of x. So on the right hand side, we have a complex function. The real component is cosine of x. The imaginary component is sine of x. Putting those two together gives you the components of the complex exponential e to the i x. Now there's some beautiful geometry associated with this. If we look in the complex plane at the point cosine of x plus i times sine of x, then this point lies on the unit circle at a location where the, the subtended angle is x. So if you look at e to the i x and you increase x, you're really just running around on the unit circle. Now this makes sense, right? The unit circle is defined by x squared plus y squared equals 1, and you've got cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, and this all fits together. Now you may have seen Euler's formula reduced to that one specific case, e to the i pi equals negative 1. That's the woo formula, but really that's just Euler's formula where we plug in an angle of pi so that we go halfway around the circle. All right, that's Euler's formula. Great, great. But what exactly does that mean? What does it mean to take e to an imaginary power? Well, we'll talk about that later. For now, I just want you to remember, if you've seen it before, or learn for the first time and spend a few minutes thinking about Euler's formula and some of the wonderful things that we're going to be able to do with it. What do I mean by that? Why, why exponentiate imaginary numbers? <laughs> Who could possibly care about that? Why use complex numbers at all? Why shouldn't we just keep everything real? Well, Euler's formula is deep and such a deep relationship between these fundamental functions has got to be useful for something. Is it? Yes, it is. We will soon see just what it's useful for. But for now, our aside has ended, and we go back to the story of talking about interesting functions.